Now with Vinu Keller and Chuck Hogan. We want to welcome you to Spengish World Network and her network on Zingo TV channels 250 and 251. Zingo TV is a free app that can be downloaded on iOS and Android devices. While you download, make sure to rate and leave a comment. Zingo TV is also available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire and Fire Sticks, Roku and Roku Sticks, and all TVs 2016 and forward. Live Now is a show all about finding the synergy and body-minded spirit. Please join us as we tackle intense topics of conversation that will spur your mind, steer your soul, and give you some direction. With that said, we are excited to dive into tonight's topic with you. Well, welcome back for another episode of Live Now with Vino and Chuck. We are so excited to have you on board with us tonight. And as always, my sister from another mister, we are coming up with even more exciting topics to speak about and to share. And tonight is no exception. Oftentimes, don't you find, Vinu, that people are always telling us that there's this two forces in the universe. There's like this flex and flow. And that almost seems kind of ethereal, a little woo-woo where we're going, okay, are we like in ourselves, outside of ourselves? And the answer would be yes. And then there's the other side, which is kind of the push and pull, which actually feels a little bit more tormenting, if you will. And a little bit, I'll say more conflict, where this is where we start to understand that the real growth begins. Right. But it comes at a cost. And so one of the things that we want to discuss with all of our viewers tonight is there's not just one way to get to happiness or prosperity or fulfillment. Mm -hmm. There's actually a myriad of different ways. And as Vinu and I often discuss, we really believe in the synergy of life that people are looking for the harmonious, if you want to call it blending of these kind of ecologies together. And I know that you have just had some experiences with this Vinu in relation to environments, families, and as the child whisperer and someone who has been spending so much time with parent child integration relative to relationships, what do you find has been like one of the blessings of flex and flow by comparison to push and pull? Well, I think that automatically that we, when we, when we first have children, um, you and I are both parents that there becomes a lifestyle of flex and flow. The kid cries, we come to them. Like we just, mm. it's an instinctual thing. You know, we're not like pushed to go get up with our kids. The first cry, we're like, okay, I'm going to go get the baby. You know, like I have a baby and I get to help this little creature be everything it needs to be. And we're excited about it. And then about three, four weeks into it, we're like, hon, can you, can you please, please, for the love of God, can you please go get the baby? Like, right. Like, and, and he, and he's like dead to the wind. Right. And I'm like, oh gosh, okay. Let me drive myself out of bed. Cause that baby's not stopping. You know, so we, it's like a great example of the flex and flow of life. And then when does it become a push or a pull? Mm. There is a transition point, isn't there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and most people call it exhaustion or sleep deprivation. Or the half to's yeah. that you and I've talked about. Yes. The half to's versus get to's. Because I think when we it's a get to, there's a pull. It pulls you in like a magnet. When you have to do it, it pushes you into it because mm. you think about because i know that you helped julie out right when the babies were born sure you know there was that first like oh i'll get him i'll get him and then of course you're like brian's like you know what i got it this time you you sleep and even when you drag yourself out in that moment and it feels almost like a a push all of a sudden when you pick up that little baby it becomes that pull absolutely and then you actually enter into, into that next day which is flex and flow like right. I, my, all three of my kids, I had the pleasure of rocking them to sleep at night. And there was a very specific way, holding their head, their bottom, their the bottom against your chest. And mm. literally it was this cadence while you were walking. And it, what was so beautiful about it was staring into this child's eyes. And as they lulled off to sleep, plus it was the best bicep workout I've ever had in my entire life. Holy smokes. Uh, and <laughs> feel the burn. And what was amazing, though, was to feel the energetic connection. Yeah. And, and this is where we get into that flex and flow property of it, 
where it to your point the exhaustion kind of melts away it's not that you're like going oh i'll go run a marathon now you're like oh nay nay i'm getting this child to sleep and hopefully not in the same bed as us however i also found that that was a part of flex and flow right that there were times when i'd bring the baby to bed and it was like why there was just this synergy. There was this comfort. There was this energy. There was this connection. And it felt so much more engaging than, oh my gosh, they're going to keep crying. I'll just have to put up with it. No, that, that to your point, and I love that you said that, Vinu, that, that, that have to, by comparison to I get to. If I had the chance to go back and do it all again, I wouldn't change anything. Absolutely. Because those moments, those times, that connection, the conversations I had with my kids, and even when I will say maybe linguistically they weren't able to communicate the same way, but they could feel the energy, they could feel the love, they could feel the connection. And those moments were priceless, absolutely priceless. And then now as I look at it as having grown kids, my youngest is 16, my eldest is 23, there's this interesting flex and flow, push and pull dynamic. And so someone said, well, give me an example. I said, that's easy. When we're hanging out and having conversation, it's just flex and flow. Mm -hmm. When it becomes push and pull, I go, it's a different conversation because they're asking me for money. And it's like going, okay. And they go, well, why is that push and pull? Well, it's normally not just about like food or their rent you know, for their, their college apartments, it's more so, Hey, I'm going out this weekend. It's like, Oh, so you're going to go have fun. And I go, well, isn't that what college is supposed to be too, dad? And I go point well taken. And are you being an active participant in your own salvation? When mm. it comes to, are you just expecting and hoping that that's going to be gifted to you on a silver platter every time? And they go, well, isn't that a privilege as well? And I said, it can be. And on the other side, that there's these things called values and belief systems that start to impart themselves into the right. conversation. And they go, oh, so are you saying that we're meaning makers and we start to attach meaning to all the stuff that goes on? I said, you can choose to reframe it, preframe it and observe it any way you want. And at the end of the day, there's life lessons in everything. Right. And they go, well, what does that have to do with flex and flow? Well, it'd be really easy for me to flex and then flow and say, I will contribute to it. What will you contribute to you having this experience tonight? Is it cutting the lawn? Is it doing laundry? Is it cleaning the floors? Well, the floors are pretty clean, Dad. I understand. That wasn't the question. What are you willing to do? What's your flow? that will allow you to have the experience that you're looking for. And so sometimes it's not a matter of it and they go, oh, it sounds like you're leveraging your kid. And I go, well, there can be a little push and pull in that too. The push is, is that, hey, you'd like to go tonight? Here are some things that you could do. I'm not telling you to do them. The pull is they're going to get to hang out with their friends tonight. Right. So I think that, you know, when we're going into like our life today, when we're looking for the harmony between our work life to support our family life, mm. you know, there, there becomes a big tug of war, you know, yes. and, you know, I think when we talk about harmony, what we're really looking at is how do we get it back in the flex and flow of it? Right. How do we get it into the ease of life? Like life just, you know, goes in and goes out. And when we ride the wave, we're, 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 we're good. And what gets us out of that, I believe through my experience is it's the push mm. It's when we get into the push of life that all these have to do's have to do. And, you know, um, I've just coming back from working with a client for the last five days. And um, I was just telling you, I'm like, yeah, I'm so tired. I just got back did the red eye. And then I I'm talking to my, my kids are so excited to see me. And then as soon as we start talking about school, my daughter's like, oh, yeah, well, uh, about that. Um, no, I'm going to get it all done. And, and I'm not one of those people that like that I'm going to. 
I'm going to does not work for me. It's, right. If you know what the expectation is for school, how are you aiding in your own rescue? What is your formula to continue the flex and flow in our family? Because now all of a sudden we have a push. Tomorrow's a deadline where all the work's supposed to be turned in before that unit is closed and goodbye. What's in is what's in. Why have we turned this into a push? Because mm. now all of a sudden tonality is changing. The energy in our body's changing. Urgency Everything has starts. elevated, right? Right. And so the, the, I, I know you talk about this a lot is like, where is, you know, our, our energy is it high or is it low? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden our high energy is like, Hey mom, you're here. I'm so happy to see you after school, blah, blah, blah is now going low because now we're going into a push and yeah. it really has taken us out of the flex and flow of where we were at. It, and it stifles creativity. What ends up happening is, is that we're actually giving it a different meaning, which is, Oh, it's so unfair. You know, I have to really commit myself to putting in this time. It's like, well, over the last several days, and, it's, and I'm not going to say that it isn't unfair at times where you're like going, oh, my gosh, they expect you to get all this work done in this time frame. And I go, well, where else in life does this show up? Right. If, if you put, you know, a quarter in a uh, light machine, as an example, and you've got five minutes of light, I guarantee you me that you are going to be doing everything you need to do. Otherwise, it's hard to do it when the lights are out. And so... Part of it is, is that it's a, about getting the experience to learn how to manage expectations. And at 11 years old, that's not necessarily a skill that I will say is proficient yet. They're still facing it as they make it. And in some instances, faking it till they make it. Um, and no, they're definitely it, facing it as it comes up. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of hopium, too, that's in there. You know, they're like, oh, ooh, I hope someone bails me out. Ooh, I, I hope it's a snow day. Oh, darn it. It's 80 degrees out. And so <laughs> part of this becomes how do we find the inspiration and aspiration to create a pull? So I, I kind of make it akin to being a surfer. And people go, what do you mean? And I go, well, there's this flex and flow. So when you're paddling out, you literally are going against the waves. So there's a push. The push is to get beyond the breakwater because that's where all the kerfuffle is. That's where all the impact is. That's kind of mm -hmm. like the, the white water zone. Well, when you get past it and all of a sudden you're floating, you're like, ooh, flex and flow. This is actually really comfortable. I can sit on my board. I can see everything that's going on. I can even see the shoreline and see how the breaks are happening. Here's where it gets interesting. In order to engage, we have to paddle again. And they're like, wait, what? I go to catch the wave, you need to paddle. And you're kicking and pulling water. And as you catch the wave, all of a sudden you feel it pull you into the wave. And you stand up and you're surfing. Whoa, riding the wave is all pull. The hydrodynamics of the wave are carrying you. And now you can carve and glide and you can actually have this amazing experience till the energy of the wave runs out. Yeah. And this is our lives. I was reminded by this graphic I saw and it's a video and it's of two steel ball bearing balls on a track. One track is completely smooth and straight. The other one is undulations all the way down. And this is what was remarkable. By most people's perspective, they say slow and steady wins the race. And I go, not true. In fact, what fuels momentum is actually the ups and downs. It actually creates the push and pull mechanism that creates the flex and flow. See, what people don't understand is in a straight line, when you have no natural movement, when there's no natural challenge, everything's just consistent and easy, it's constant push on the part of that person to initiate the momentum and to keep it going because it doesn't gain more momentum. It's just slow and steady as this one is actually moving. And I'll remind you cannot measure what's not moving. Right. So when we get into this whole dynamic of, oh man, I'm going through so much conflict, I go, good for you. Because I know, I know as the universe is my witness, that you're growing right now, that you are experiencing dynamic flex and flow within you 
that's coming from the push and the pull. Right. So some people go, oh, but you said this was versus. Actually, think of it as the yin and yang. They are they are akin to one another. The push and pull actually feeds the flex and flow and vice versa. Because we didn't say that you had to f- push and pull through pain. We said it could be uncomfortable. But now when you flex and you're like, oh, man, I'm flowing and I have resourcefulness. I can figure out ways to optimize this. That feels different. Well, let's bring this into like local, uh, not local, but global views. Like right yes. now there's, you know, a horrible war going on in Israel. You know, a lot of people are dying. Um, I just found out that um, uh, a, a friend of mine's brother-in-law got stuck over there. Like he was mm-hmm. visiting his family and it broke out and he can't get back. Mm-mm. And um, it just, you know, I have clients that have families there. Like it's really hit home. Yes. And, um, you know, there's a lot of emotions going on. And, you know, you said something that about the motion, right? About the motion yes. in life. And emotion is our emotion. You know, the, our emotions give us the motion in our life. And so there's a lot of emotions going on. So if we're going to take this context into what's going on right now, you know, our show is live now. Like we are living now in a world that is very high on emotion and i would feel safe to say very low on intellect at times Mm. and um you know how to help our viewers because we're worldwide so this is something that's affecting the world yes you know um it there's a lot of push going on right now in a lot of areas i mean we have israel we have ukraine um there and there's still civil unrest all over the world and you know in different republics in Africa. And what what part of the challenge becomes is that perception is people's reality. Yeah. It's difficult to understand that there is complexity in the news and how information is being disseminated and what's real and what's perceived. Um, and it can be extremely polarizing for people. For I know some people who are of Palestinian descent. I know people who have Jewish descent. Um, I know some people who live in Morocco and, and Egypt. And this is something that's universally affecting the world. Right. The level of extremism that's going on. And we cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's so important that, you know, level minds prevail and that the voice of reason I can understand upset. I I absolutely can understand being triggered or having a response. And on the other side of it, I say, every single person who perishes bleeds red. Where we're not, you know, having a conversation about carbon-based life forms and then silicone-based life forms that came from outer space. And people go, okay, so do we look similar? Do we have similar traits? Do we have similar belief systems do we eat do we sleep do we love our families i go we have more in common than we have that separates us and yet what we're bickering over is land and it's sad because we're so caught up into how it got started and how it got started and what we need to do is how do we move forward what how do we finish it yes i mean let's do this like more innocent lives don't have to be it doesn't you know, I, I hear more contemplation of like how it got started. We're so worried about how it got started and, you know, all the lives that are perishing, as you said, and it's like, we need to come together and find the peace and, you know, all wars have ended. Right. And yes. then they, they, but they had to begin first. So, you know, there's and and. I, I won't assume for a moment that I know all the intricacies of what's going on behind the scenes. I won't either. <laughs> I, I will say that I pray every day that, again, clear heads prevail, that there are ways to stop this. And yet when things are espoused as being a holy event, like it's a holy war or it's a religious um insurrection that that this is how we're going to express self it's not lost on anyone to say people are suffering 
Right. And is it really for the greater good? I, I, I can't answer that. I, what I can say is my heart goes out. And I know on behalf of you and I, Vinu, to the world that, you know, can we all just take a moment just to send healing energy and positive thoughts to all these souls who believe that they're doing the right thing for the right reasons. And so I, I can't chastise anyone and I won't. I will just say people are entitled to feel the way they feel. And on the other side, if it was your family, if it was your loved ones, would you be reacting in the same way? And they, and for some, they may feel like they are counter reacting to what they have felt as oppression over decades. And well, it goes to show you is that like, we can be in such a flex and a flow and then something like this happens. And all of a sudden we go into a push, yes. we can be in a flex and a flow. And then all of a sudden there's an earthquake or, mm. or wildfires or, you know, unfortunately shootings it's just the way the world is and it's if we can prepare our body mind and spirit as you and i talk about in a way to be part of the change yes instead of praying for a change we can create more of a unity to get back into the flex and flow of life yes manipulation isn't something new Mm. Um, leverage and influence is nothing that hasn't been experienced since the beginning of time. You know, the biggest Neanderthal was the one who probably got the most women and killed the most saber tooth tigers and took out the most mammoths. You know, I, I'm sure he's, he's a popular guy. Uh, and so at the end of the day, we get to understand something. And that is this synergistic thing that we call life is really reliant on so many different facets we're here tonight live streaming with electricity and lights and and sound and and it's like ooh, am i worried about a missile flying into you know an incendiary device flying into my home no and there's this amazing sense of security that comes from that peace of mind uh where in other countries in the world th this not is anything. not this is not the daily occurrence no. they have bomb shelters they have you know facilities and sirens and warnings and and so to your so be point, kind be kind to people like oh, it starts with us being kind yes thank you, you know, take away the judgment be kind be the change i saw the most beautiful image and it was of a little boy wearing a yarmulke and he's walking hand in hand with a little boy who's who's wearing you know full uh muslim garb and and it was just it was beautiful to see because they're holding hands and walking and it almost appears like they're talking to each other so hate isn't something that's innate no and and you and i had this conversation that hates a higher level of charge that comes along with disagreement and with with frustration absolutely well and perception mm -hmm. you know i hate you you hate me it's like no i i don't just because i don't agree with you does not mean i hate you and there's almost a level that's even beyond hate which is indifference see at least when there's a charge we can agree to disagree mm. when there's indifference we're actually dismissing and not even giving any kind of leverage or impact to someone. And literally we're going, you have this much value in my model of the world. And wow, how. And, I mean, and there's literally no more flow. There's nothing to flex through. There's no more flow. It is a, a done deal. Stop. And it's devoid of emotion. So there's no energy in motion at that point. It is literally that I don't care. Mm hmm. I don't know if there's crueler words ever spoken because if there's a monicum of caring, if there's a monicum of acknowledgement, then it provides a narrative where we can actually start to engage with one another and have a discussion. Someone was uh, recollecting they had two 
uh, actually four soldiers in total. They had a Japanese soldier, an American soldier. They had a German soldier and then an Italian soldier. And they all had met up. This was probably 15, 20 years ago. And they were all survivors of World War II. And they're all having these stories about their engagements. The U.S. airmen, uh, corpsmen, actually had been both in the Europe campaign and in the Asian campaign. And so he was speaking to all of them and asking them what their experiences were. And all four men broke down. Said we were doing what we were told to do. We're 17, 18, 19 years old. And being asked when we didn't have the maturity to make some decisions about how we engage with other people. Right. And prior to this, none of them had ever had hate in their hearts. And they were trying to figure out, so do I hate these people? And what they realized was, is that the minute we make someone an adversary, the minute we change the meaning that there is a winning and a losing to this game, we create a push and pull scenario that becomes life and death. Mm. And we will push aside all of our values and rules because on any other day back home, they would never exercise this behavior ever. In fact, it would be beyond the fray. It would go against their religious beliefs. But in the arena of war, the gloves come off. And now they're gladiators and they're doing battle. And for To what end? Mm. For what result? There's no winning. There's no losing. And what was so blessed was for them to show their families to each other. And that they had grandkids and great grandkids. And they were talking about their interests and what they love to do. And it was quite beautiful to see that they're like, oh, what's your favorite thing? And they all responded the same way. They said, getting ice cream with our grandkids. Mm. And they all said it, which was amazing. And they're like, oh, isn't that amazing? It's like the most beautiful thing. And they go, oh, yes. It's quite remarkable to see their eyes light up and to share. And that this is something that seems so simple and so you know juvenile. And yet it warmed every single one of their hearts. And then the interviewer asked the most poignant question. Would you do it again? And they all got quiet. They just went from this high adulation of sharing their, their family memories and this engagement and, and they all got uber quiet. Like, I mean, you could hear a pin drop. And the German fellow went first. And he said, had I not done what I did, I wouldn't be here today. Amen. I mean, and so in spite of all of it, right? Mm hmm. And they were all like, that is true. Because what would have happened? You get court martialed, you get thrown in prison, you, you are killed or be killed. It's like, and so they all learned one valuable lesson. And maybe this is what takes us to the flex and flow and push and pull today. And that is forgiveness. What if as these gentlemen did, because it's the only way that they could live with themselves and go on to live life, was they learned how to forgive themselves and each other. And that these horrific actions weren't the measure of the men and women and a representation of their life. It was a moment in time where they were all in an altered state. They were all in you know, flight or fight. You know, it was kill or be killed. It, it's, and yet there were still people who couldn't bring themselves to do that to another human being. And they went their separate ways. For us with our kids and in today's environment, we can look at social media as flex and flow or push and pull. 
But I think a lot of people don't know when they're in the flow. And I think that's a big thing is like, when, when are you in your flow? You know, um, like right now you're in your flow. You're just saying what comes to you in that moment to share with people what this looks like to be, to make a choice, Mm. you know, to let go of the expectations and just make a choice to be kind, to find a kind of world for our kids and our grandkids and our, you know, our ancestors that we're going to, you know, leave behind one day. And, you know, it's finding that moment when we're in our flow and how to stay in that and be flexible. What is the flex and flow Mm -hmm. theory? For me, it's, I'm, I'm in my flow. I'm in my, I I know what I'm doing in my morning. I know what I'm doing in my day and I'm going, then all of a sudden something stops it. And I have a choice in that moment to let it be a push for me or be flexible with it. Yes. You know, flex the hose. Like I think of a hose, right? Like water runs out of the hose. And then all of a sudden you're getting around the other side of your car and you're trying to rinse off the suds before the the sun dries (laughs) it on. And it's like, wait, wait what happened to that hose? What the heck? And it's a kink. Yes. Because it's so flexible. There's a kink in it. So you get irritated and you're wrestling with it. And st- and then all of a sudden the kid goes around the car while you're all trying to get it around the tire and you're trying to get it to work. And the kid goes around and you're looking at it going, what is going on? The kid just goes, shh, bink, and it goes, yep. bink, you know, right. Get you right into the eyes. And it's okay. like, what the heck happened? And then we get mad instead of just getting, having fun with it. And yes, that's being in the flexibility of it. Like what? And they're like, mom, look, I did it. And like, yes, you, yes, you did it. And it did it all over me <laughs> instead of the car, but that's it. Laugh with it. Have fun with it. That's the flex of the flow. That's the, being flexible in the moment. The appreciation, the humor, the, the moment, right? It's, yeah. it's actually being in the moment is, when we get upset, that's not the moment. Mm. There was something going on way before then. Like, oh, I got to wash this freaking car. And, oh, man, it's so hot out today. And, and it, I mean, they just did you a favor. You got doused and you're like, oh. and on any other day that you would be in a playful mood, you were like, that was refreshing. Right. That's fun. Guess what? Psst, squirting your back. Yeah. And, and so except I don't want to get the car wet because we just dried it off. Uh, so <laughs> part of it is, is that it's, it, again, it's perception. Mm-hmm. The push and the pull, and I'll remind our viewers at home, is equally as important as the flex and flow. See, it's through those challenges, it's through the kinks in the hose that you actually end up becoming even more sensory aware that you actually end up looking around and seeing what's going on around you instead of being just in an unconscious state where we're just going with it. Right. I've driven home before and got, oh, we're home. Didn't even think about it. And all of a sudden you're in your driveway or pulling in your garage. I go, wait, I actually opened the gate. I actually opened the garage door. I've actually pulled in the garage. I've shut off my car engine and I'm like, oh, I'm here. Yay. It's like, God, wait a second. What about all the other stuff that was going on? The music, the lights, the sirens of the ambulance that went by, you know, earlier. It's like, okay, so why do I go there? It's not that those things weren't important, but I'm going to remind all of us as well that your awareness is something that we get to tune into and sometimes energetically we may be in such a comfort zone that we don't challenge self to be more aware. Mm. It isn't that if the sirens pulled up behind you that you wouldn't be aware. It isn't that if a dog darted in front of your car, you wouldn't be aware. The difference is, is that you have a different level of competency in that moment. It doesn't mean that you have full sensory awareness of everything. Right. Right? I remember when I first got my driver's license. I don't know about you, Vinu, but I was aware of everything. I was aware of every person, place, thing, car, dog, pet, leaf, acorn, whatever was coming down at my car, around my car. And 
you were and just like, what wasn't around my car. Oh, I manifested stuff that you're like, going, okay, I think I saw something. There was a shadow. And so why do we go there though? Because we don't have, again, we're faking it till we make it. We face it as we make it, then we faith it till we make it. And then we actually believe as we achieve. So when we're going through these different processes, and yet I will remind us all that the flex and flow actually feeds the push and pull. Yes. So good. If you, if you're going to work hard, you need to sleep well at night. That's the body's flex and flow. It's rejuvenating you. It's detoxifying your brain, your mm -hmm. lymphatic system, your vestibular system, everything's shutting down. You're going into the unconsciousness of your body. Right. Different brain waves are kicking in at this point by comparison to when you were pushing all day and pulling all day and achieving all day. As our producer has already reminded us on regular occasion that sleep is overrated. Well, for him, it is. <laughs> and it's something I've actually grown much more appreciative of. Oh, 100 percent. You know, I actually and like that's the thing is like, what are the resources out there that you can use to create that flex and flow to get out of the push and the pull? Right. And like so I got like the aura ring that I wear because I was really trying to figure out in my mind, I was sleeping great. And in reality, like I was getting maybe an hour of deep sleep, right? Two hours of REM. And I didn't know REM was different than deep sleep. And so it was interesting looking at like my own sleep patterns, you know, um, and, but I was pretty consistent between seven and eight hours. And that's what I aim for, you right. know, I aim for seven, to eight hours. So um, I was glad about that. And, you know, despite what our producer thinks as you and I've been trying to invite him to sleep more, <laughs> you know, sleep is part of the process. Like to me, it's like, I tell my clients, you need to give your time, your brain time to recharge. It's like plugging your battery in, yep. you know, if you use your phone battery out. If you use your car battery out now that cars are all plugged in, it's, it's not going to run. It has no more fuel to run. So what are you doing for yourself to stay in the flow of life? Well, and, and this is where if you ignore the flex and flow, your body's going to increase the level of resistance in the push and pull. And so <laughs> he's got an answer for everything. And, and I will remind you, my, my dear friend, that increased adrenaline also increases cortisol levels. It also mm -hmm. increases histamines and deadens your neuro, you know, your neural responders in your body. And so why do I go there? This vessel that you've been blessed with needs to be maintained. And weights only go so far. The fuel that you take ingest only goes so far when we start to look at what peace and the flex and flow of we can substitute to a degree meditation biofeedback relaxation yoga there's all these different things that can help feed the narrative and the modalities of healing within the body at the end of the day it's really about changing your frequency so that you can be in tune with releasing mm. and not holding we are so much achievers that when these type a personalities in us start to take over we feel like that oh it's the push to push to push i know a lot of people who have become very adept at pushing and have not achieved the functionality of having pull they feel like they always have to be behind the cart there's no one pulling on the cart for them right and then they go, well, flex and flow. Are you nuts? I don't have any flex or flow. They're like, oh, no, you're just go, go, go. <laughs> you're push. When? Yes, now, always. All the time. Thank you. All the time. All the time. And so what advice would you give to someone, Vinu, who is just feeling adrenal fatigue? They are burning the candle at both ends in the middle. And it doesn't mean that you won't have stints in your life, that you will enter into that kind of existence. 
But is it yeah. always or is it a moment? Is it a, a reason? Is it a season? I mean, or I is think, it a I lifestyle? Think, I think everything in our life is a moment. You know, mm-hmm. as one of our great friends, Steve Linder always says is everything is just a dot, it's you know, it's just a dot in time. And at the end of our life, when we get ready to draw that last breath, we're going to see all these dots all of a sudden put together and it's going to be a beautiful picture called our life. Yep. And we're not going to be able to identify what dot was. It's just a bunch of dots that created who we, what, what we did on this earth. Yes. And so what I have learned because I used to be one of those persons to just push and push and push. I got to push to get more. I got to push to get further ahead. I got to mm-hmm. push. And, you know, um, and then I would feel guilty if I took time for me, I'd feel guilty if I was sick, I would feel guilty. Like there was all this guilt because I wasn't out there pushing right. to become more, to be more mm-hmm. and knowing that I was already enough. Boy, that so, is a deep, deep, understanding. Yeah. And so for me, it was here, here's the strategy is number one, know your own worth, know your worth to take time off your worth to take a moment off your worth to take a day off your worth to take a week off your worth to take a month off. And when you say, Oh, I can't do it because I got to work, then find each day a moment. I had a, a mentor of mine say that every hour on the hour, his alarm goes off, no matter what he's doing, where he's at, you know, and it's a reminder to take 10 seconds to just breathe and be grateful. Yes. So he went from never doing that to doing that 10, 11, 12 hours a day, if not more, well, for him, probably 20 hours, you know, a day of those little moments to be grateful to the point where he did not need his alarm anymore because it was so ingrained in him that it became a way that he lived. Right. And he said, honestly, that is what put him back into the flow. It gave him a moment to check out of the push in the pull all the time. You know, we always say that pull, that magnetism, it pulls you to it. And even it's pulling you to, you're still doing things to get there. Absolutely. So it's taking that moment to just breathe and recognize that I'm worth it in this moment to turn everything off for 10 seconds and just acknowledge where I'm at, who I'm, who I am and what I have around me and within me. Yes. And then go back to whatever you're doing, right? It's those little things, those little habits, if you would, that create the flow of our life. Oh, definitely. The practice of our life. The appreciation and slowing down for a moment. Um, you know, <laughs> I, you're random, man. Our producer, yeah. uh, I, I don't know what a pickleball moment is, but we'll run with it. Um, well, he knows that I was getting up at 5 a.m. to go play pickleball. The, well, there you go. I, we found our time, right? We found our time. We make the time. And, and this goes to the next level of this, which is schedule your relief. Right. Schedule it. So in between meetings, give yourself that five to 10 minutes to reset. If it's taking your shoes off and earthing in, a, in the lawn, if it's gra- grabbing hydration, if it's you know having a beverage, if it's having food, if it's having something that's going to help elevate you, then... Because we we say this all the time, and we're going to remind you, is it fueling you or feeding on you? That's interesting. That's interesting. You know, and it's funny because when we look at fuel, fuel, the way we, well, the way I've been raised, especially in the last fifteen years, where nutrition has been more on my forefront than ever mm. before, it's the fuel in your body that keeps you going. But then I've realized that there's more to fuel than just food. It's more than what I'm just putting in my body. It's what am I doing to my body? Yes. And it's been proven scientifically that resistance rebuilds muscle. It rebuilds 
synaptic function, it, re, it re-engages our cells. And that bone density, when you actually push against something, it's that impact that actually helps create the resonance frequency in your bones where it starts to say, oh, I have pressure, I must respond. So we're gonna increase uh, the calcium deposits. We're gonna increase the level of collagen that we need within our bodies as well. And so people go, wait, what? It's like, well, again, you are what you eat. So if you are eating a steady diet of diet cola and funyuns, I can almost invariably guarantee you that you may not be having the level of nutrition required to fuel you the way that you need to. You're 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 running low low volume <laughs> tacos and fajitas is the comment from our producer. Um, and yes, that is a food group. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of it, I would also remind you. Yeah. Yeah. No, the food group. Yes. Yeah. So there's, there's the nutrition food group. There's the, you know, like right now my kids are into prime and I got them reading labels. I got, you know, even my clients reading labels because, yes, you know, it is so important now more than ever that we read okay. labels. Like I was, we got our kids off the red dye and what a difference we've seen in their behavior. Like Absolutely. I literally have gone through our pantry and you'd be surprised. And the biomedical stuff that's in our food. Yes. It's like in our, our goldfish, we loved goldfish. We love goldfish so much. We're not eating it anymore because of what's in it. It's exactly. bio engineered material in your food. It's not real. It's it, not, it's it, not <laughs> fake cheese. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right. You can't light the cheese on fire. So here's here's what we're saying to the world really is. What do you need to stay in your flow? Right. Do you need more sleep? Do you need better nutrition? Do you need less sugar? Do you need more water? Do you need community? Do you need connection? Do you need rest? Our producer needs a new life. You know what? What specifically do you need? <laughs> He's cheeky tonight. He what, is. <laughs> what specifically do you need in your life to keep in your flow, to get out of always the push and the pull, to get more into the flex and the flow? Love it. Remembering that when you're in flow, you don't necessarily have to go to the push and the pull and the stress. You can say, it's just a flex time. What do I need to do? It's a choice. It's it a is. choice. And I love what you said, Bino, and thank you for reminding everyone. What do you need? What do you really need? What is it that's going to fuel you, take you to the next level, be different? What is it that's going to exhilarate you and elevate you? What's going to allow you to stretch beyond what's comfortable right now? Because the truth is, everything that you desire is literally on the other side of fear, discomfort, awkwardness, challenge. And there is no growth in comfort. And I'm not sorry to say that. That's the reality. So as you progress and you get more comfortable with being uncomfortable, you will find that you're advancing at a rate that's way beyond even your wildest or loftiest dreams. Because mm -hmm. that first drop may be the steepest one. As you come out of it, wow, you have so much momentum. And it never would have happened had you not committed. It never would have happened if you didn't take the first step in mammoth action. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was so reminded a couple of weeks ago, I was doing a training and in my training, they're like, what's a fun thing for you that you always have fun at? I'm like roller coasters. I love the ups and the downs and the twists and the turns. And they say, and what is life to you? I'm like, life is my roller coaster. And they say, so do you see it as just as much fun or do you see it as, stress. And I'm like, well, up until that question, I used to see it as stress, but thank <laughs> you for reminding me. It's the most fun that we get to have in our life. If it, oh. if the roller coaster was just loop-de-loops, -loops, it's no fun, right? It's the, the not knowing yes. of the next hill and the next turn and whatever. And so just enjoy, find your flow yep. Absolutely. without judgment, without judgment. Wow, Vinu. I mean, this time flies by so fast and we could talk about this topic all night. Um, but we're not. So we will see you all next week. 
Thank you for joining us on this episode of Live Now with Vinu Keller and Chuck Hogan. Follow us on Instagram at Vinu Inspires and at Chuck Hogan Now. For more about Vinu, please visit VinuInspires.com. And for Chuck, please check out YBLNow.com. This show can also be heard on Spanglish Radio Network. Please check out SpanglishWorld.ca for all your news and programming. Spanglish World. Watch it, hear it, read it, download it, and live it.